Well, hey, hey there, and how y'all doing? This here is Calvin coming to you for Dave Devos, and so thankful to be back with you again. You know, Tina and I just returned from uh, North Carolina, and we were out there on the Blue Ridge Mountains, and it was a gorgeous, wonderful time. God blessed us like you would not even believe. And now we, we're returning back here to Minnesota, and so glad to be with you. And thinking this morning about uh, the return that's going to be coming up tomorrow night and Saturday and a simulcast where they're calling people together to pray and uh, thinking about three things in particular from their website on the Internet. They got the uh, humility, sincerity of prayer and repentance, the three things. And I'm going to return to uh, talking like a Minnesotan if I can, because <laughs> Uh, it's been a long time. You know, Tina and I lived in Mississippi, North Carolina, and we had the opportunity to reconnect with some people who were with us during some really hard times and some really good times as well. And that and, and that and seeing God's good green earth, it was beautiful. But anyway, back back to here. Uh, we're we're here and getting ready for the return coming up tomorrow night and Saturday and looking forward to that opportunity to have our nation and have the church being called to repentance and being called to coming back to God. And as I was thinking about the three things, uh, humility, sincerity of prayer, and repentance, I was also thinking about repentance in particular, and, and I'll, be, I'll just be honest with you, that there are times where I get a little bit cynical about calls to repentance, because I think that um, what often happens is we look at the sins of others, and we start pointing out those sins at others. And I'm reminded that when we point out the sins of others, that there are three sin, three fingers that are pointing back at us. And so my prayer is that this will truly be a time of humility where the church will be willing to um, be honest about ourselves, where we will come to God in sincerity of prayer, where we are going to be willing to offer anything it takes for him to hear us. And of course, we know that we depend, first of all, on his grace and his mercy, and then also repentance, being willing to turn from our sin, whatever it is that he calls us to see and turn away from. And as I was thinking about that, I reflected on a time in David's life. And David, oh, here comes the dog. <laughs> uh, and David um, you know, he was a godly man in many ways, but he was also a fallen creature, and we're going to encounter him near the end of his life, and he's going to once again show himself sinful. He's involved in counting the soldiers, and he wants to know how many people are on his side, which if you read scripture, especially leading up to that, you realize that the number of soldiers really doesn't matter when God is fighting the fight. And David knew that, and yet he had uh, commissioned that someone would go out and enlist all these soldiers into his army. And Joab, his nephew, who was also the leader of his army said, David, I don't, I don't think that's something you wanna do. And David did it anyway. And then when it was all done, came to realize that what he had done was truly sinful. And so this is from 2 Samuel 24. And this is David coming to recognize that it's sin. And he repents to God and he says, boy, God, I'm really sorry for what I've done. I pray that you would, in your mercy, forgive me. In the meantime, God has already spoken to Gad the prophet. And Gad comes to him, David, and gives him a choice. He said, here's what God is saying to you. There are three options that you have for how God is going to punish your sin. And the first one is three years of famine in the land. The second one is three months of being pursued by your enemies. And the third one is three days of plague. And David said, well, I'm not going to take the second one because I don't want to fall into the hands of my enemies because they're not merciful like God is. Never mind that they're being sent by God. I'm going to fall into the hands of my God who is merciful, maybe, maybe hoping that he will escape the hardship of his sin. 
And so Gad said, oh, all right, then it's going to be the three years of, or three days of plague. And during that three days of plague, 70,000 people died. 70,000 people died because David had sinned against God. And this cannot, um, cannot have been missed by David. He knows what's going on. He hears it. He knows why this is happening. And so he hears about this. His heart, of course, is broken. And again, he's repentant. He wants to have God relent in bringing this punishment against him. And so he calls out to God and sees that this um, plague is now coming to an end and determines that he's going to make an offering. And that offering then is where we encounter David again, because he goes to the threshing floor of Arana, the Jebusite. And Arana, of course, knows what's going on. And he sees that David's going to make a sacrifice. So he's thinking, okay, so if you make this sacrifice, maybe this is what has to happen in order for this plague, the end, a plague that makes COVID-19 look like the common cold, three days, 70,000 people, come on. Maybe this will put it to an end. And he says, I'll give you the threshing floor. I'll give you whatever you need to make this sacrifice happen so that this can end. And that's where we hear David, who at the very end of his kingship says this. No, I insist on paying you for it. I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. And so here's what I'm thinking about for the return, right? We're going to come to God in repentance. And when we're coming to God in repentance, humility, sincerity of prayer, we're not confessing the sins of other people. We're confessing our sins. We're not confessing the sins of the nation. We're confessing the sins of the church. And we're asking God to hear our cries for mercy because our sin is being punished. Our sin is what God is holding us accountable for. And so we come to God in humility and sincerity of prayer, ready to repent of anything that he calls us to repent of. And so my question for us as we go into this is, is very simple. Are we ready to be humble before God? Are we ready to be truly sincere in the prayers that we offer to him? And are we ready to repent from whatever it is that he calls us to? I have my ideas about what we as the church need to repent from. I have my ideas about what we as a nation need to repent from. But that's not the point. The point is, what does God see? What does God want us to turn away from? What was, does God want us to confess before him and call on him for mercy so that we can experience his forgiveness and that we can return to him and have his favor return to us. So praying for this weekend, for all those who are going to be gathering together, for all those who are going to be speaking, for all those who are going to be listening, that we would return to God and do that in true humility and repentance. Let's pray. Father, our nation has a weekend coming up in which we are going to be challenged to listen to your voice. And we pray that we would hear your voice, first of all. We pray that your spirit would speak loudly and clearly to each one of us, that your spirit would speak loudly and clearly to your church, and that we, your people, would humble ourselves and have um, you lead us in repentance and lead us toward forgiveness. We don't know what your plans are for our nation. We don't know what your plans are for the election coming up, but we know that you have good plans for our world of drawing us back to yourself. And so continue your work in us, in our churches and in our nation and in our world. And we pray in Jesus' name and for his sake and for his glory. Amen. Well, I hope you have a wonderful day uh, celebrating this beautiful weather we're having up here. 
and celebrating the grace that God has shown to us. Blessings.